Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. Today let's put to the test what we learned in earlier videos about the hand flying and draw data flying of the PMDG Boeing 737 aircraft. Today we are standing in Paderborn on runway 24 and we have planned a basic SID that can very well be flown raw data, which is the Warburg 1 Whiskey SID. The initial climb clearance on this one is 5,000 feet, which we have put in the MCP. And for the routing itself, we'll leave on the runway track 235 until 4.9 me from Paderborn. And then we'll make a left-hand turn to join the radial 268 inbound Warburg VOR, climbing to 5,000 feet as previously set. Let's quickly talk about the NAV setup that I have done for this departure. We need the Paderborn DME, which is on 108.5. And that is on standby in the number one radio, and that is active in the number two radio. And then we need Warburg VOR 13.7, which is standby in number two and active on number one. On the MCP, we have the courses 088 as the uh, inbound for the radial 268 into Warburg, and then we have 235 as the runway track set on course number two. Why did I do the setup this way? That is rather simple. The Paderborn DME, being a simple DME, is not going to provide us any lateral guidance, so there would be no sense putting it active in the number one radio, because it wouldn't show us where to go. And the Warburg VOR, however, does have lateral guidance, since it is a VOR DME. Therefore, it is active on number one, with the bearing 088 selected on my course selector, as the first inbound track. Now there is also uh, an ILS available here, 118.15, that would provide us lateral guidance. However, I do find these to be very unreliable in Flight Simulator and um, I rather prefer not to use them and to keep the track manually on the initial segment. So this is our NAV setup. Apart from that, we have loaded the airplane at a gross weight of uh, 60 tons. So that is the uh, standard weight that we are normally using in the Boeing 737. And apart from that, the MCP is set up on the runway track, 235, altitude 5000, and the V2 of 137 knots is also selected. The FMC is fully loaded, as it does provide us some basic guidance, such as um, thrust control and takeoff speeds. However, apart from that, we are not going to make any use of the FMC, even though the route is loaded in as a backup, which is something that I would recommend everyone to do, because if something should go wrong, you can always just switch back to the map mode, and then you will be straight back on the course, and you won't cause any anger among air traffic control residents and so on. So that is basically our setup for this flight. Let's quickly review the departure profile raw data. We're going to depart with the N1 as selected in the uh, FMC, 40 degrees flex temperature, 22k D rate, and that is going to um, give us 88.6%. We're going to set the thrust approximately on those bucks over here and the thrust basically has to be within 1% of the target value for manual flight. After departure we're going to rotate 15 degrees, climb to the acceleration altitude which is going to be 1000 feet above the uh, aerodrome level, so the top of the white band on the altimeter, and then we'll pitch down 7.5 degrees while accelerating, retracting the flaps on schedule, then round about 12.5 degrees to keep us on our um, flaps up speed and with that we're going to fly the first turn and once we level off we need approximately 5-6 degrees of pitch with around about 60% and 1 in order to keep our speed at around 220 knots. Now for completeness let's quickly talk about the uh, continued flight profile in case we would not stop the climb but in case we would want to continue then we would use around about 5 degrees for acceleration from the up speed to um, 250 knots. And at 250 knots we need around about 10 degrees of pitch in order to um, maintain 250 knots and climb. But that won't play too much of a role today. We'll uh, 
probably have leveled off by the time we start the initial turn, and then we are going to keep the airplane slow at 220 knots for our exercises. But that shall complete our theoretical instructions. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of flying. The airplane is fully prepared. We're sitting on the runway here. Not the best weather, but that is all taken into account for in our takeoff calculation. So let's go ahead and do some flying. Lights are on. Break us off. Timing. Stabilized. Some take a thrust. Take a thrust set indication is normal. Checked. Okay, back up. Flaps one. Speed checked. Flaps one. I'll quickly put that wiper off. Okay, flaps up. Speed checked, flaps up. Okay, climb thrust is roundabout set. So, 12 degrees pitch, 12 and a half. A little bit of turbulence having an effect here, but overall... Right now, I'm using the white line to keep it on the track. And we have 4.9 dME, so we are going to start our turn. Approach on the level of altitude. Time to reduce our pitch a little bit. Take the thrust back, already is 60%. And we can see our radial is coming in here, so now we're steering the aircraft right onto that radial. In the turn we need a little bit more than the um, target pitch, so if we're flying at like, you know, 6 and a bit degrees here, that is totally normal. Let's quickly roll out in order to intercept the radial properly. And here we go, 60% and 1. Target pitch now at about 5 degrees. That works rather good. It is very normal that you have your theoretical target values but in practical terms, you usually need to adjust them by a degree or so, since uh, not every airplane is the same and the environmental conditions always play a role as well. Whenever you have the time, as um, I said in my previous tutorials, do use it to line up your uh, heading bugs. So 
going to put 088 in the heading over here as well. And here we are, established on the radial inbound to Warburg, 18 miles to run, at an altitude of 5,000 feet, and that is pretty much um, the maneuvering of this uh, standard instrument departure completed. So, time to do the after takeoff checklist. I'm actually gonna keep the start switches in continuous over here. Now, let's quickly talk about the instrument scan once again, because that is the most important point in maintaining proper control of your aeroplane. The basic instrument scan is always from the ADI to the speed, back to the ADI, to the altitude, back to the ADI, to the thrust, and back to the ADI. At some point you should also try to um, get your vertical speed into account and of course have a look at the navigation display which should come right after the altitude. But that is it my friends, thank you very much for watching, hope you found this one interesting and now, now go and practice your um, raw data flying. I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next video and as always if you do want to support the channel then you can do so through the buy me coffee link below or if you want to become a permanent supporter you can use the patreon link. For now that is it, thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.